This is Dumb Down Life number 126. And welcome to the annual recording of the Dumb Down Life. <laughs> Hello, Lance. Hi, Darren. How are you? I'm good. What have you been up to, mate? Not spoken to you for ages. Ages and ages. Almost a year. Well, um, do you know what? I can't remember. It's been... <laughs> it's not strictly true. We have... We've spoken. We do. We do keep speaking. We don't only speak to each other through the medium of the podcast. This um, is true. We've, we've met up a few times in the last 12 months. Right? And yeah. anyone that follows either of us on, on the Book of Faces or the Deck of Tweets. Tweet Deck? No. No. The Tour of Twits. No, that doesn't even work either. <laughs> Twitter. <laughs> Twitter. Yeah, let's, was... let's just stay with Twitter. <laughs> it's Twitter and uh, book face. Um, yeah, we'll know that we've been doing um, various walks around the country or mainly up in yorkshire in fact just the one walk should we start again <laughs> no, no, no 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 we've done two walks up in yorkshire we've done two walks up in yorkshire but we also did i mean since the last show we also did the brecon beacons didn't we we did yes i believe that's your photo on your google plus profile isn't it under the waterfall yes that's right yep um i do try to sort of standardize my profile pictures and everything across all of the different um social mediums and there's always one i forget so at the moment i've got the um the pic one of the pictures from uh, penny gint as my facebook picture yes but then the google plus one's different but then who sees google plus anyway uh, me i use it more than i do facebook i i think it's getting a bit of a resurgence well, I, I kind of use that one for communities um, and Facebook for chatting to people. I think that's just the way it's fallen. With, with me, I use it for the same way as I shared my photographs with you um, from from this weekend. The, the, the photographs are all shared up onto Google Plus automatically. And then if I want to share them with you, it's just there's no brainer you don't have to upload it to anywhere else you don't have to you say here lance here's the photographs that we took over the weekend and it just works um with facebook you don't quite get that although there's probably hmm, i wonder if there's the option to automatically update to facebook and what i want to if it does hmm. not so sure <laughs> about that i must say just just one thing one more thing about the walking um having seen the photos you shared with me of me um yeah. I, I I really need to lose some weight. <laughs> to be fair, they're not particularly flattering photographs. They're, they're I mean, not, are they? I'm sitting yeah, yeah. sitting halfway up a mountain, all sort of scrunched over on the edge of a thing. But exactly. man, I don't look good. I really don't look good. <laughs> and to that mind, I'm actually cycling into work tomorrow. Oh, nice. Oh, uh, well, um, I'm sorry if the photographs made you feel overweight, but I'm kind of glad that they're making you do something about it. That's <laughs> like a twisted kind of a compliment. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah now, the, the whole sitting on the edge of a rock like that, I don't think anybody's going to look particularly um, flattering. <laughs> Unless you bear grills. <laughs> I think you uh, can pull it off. <laughs> <laughs> but um, the, you, you sent me those photographs back saying that they weren't particularly good, but there's just that... that one that um, one was, was quite good uh, the one that was in focus that was it <clears throat> yeah but uh, as we've said with uh, photography before you take enough photographs and you're you're bound to find a, a decent one and considering there was only about a dozen at the most getting that one was um w was quite good good yeah um well talking about rocks and distances and stuff um 10 years ago NASA launched two um, rovers, robots, uh, to it's Mars. It is 10 years. Blimey. Yeah, I know. Opp opportunity. And what was the other? Spirit was the other one, wasn't Spirit. it? Yep. Yeah. Um, now, these robots were designed to work for about nine months and yep. drive a total distance of about a kilometre. That's all they'd prep them for, all they'd design them I to do. I don't know why, but I had the I had the, the number of four kilometres in my head. But but if you say it's a kilometre, then... Well, th that's what I read, you know. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Um, uh, and ten years later, Opportunity is still going. I, th I think Spirit died a, a while ago, didn't it? I um, think Spirit, yeah, Spirit has... has, has sort um, of failed, didn't stopped it? Stopped responding, yeah. 
um, but opportunity is still going um, and going so well in fact that it's just broken the I've got to get the phrasing right for this uh, the off world driving record for distance it's just done just over 25 miles oh wow 25 miles in 10 years <laughs> yeah <laughs> so you say 25 miles wow that's pretty impressive in 10 years in 10 years yeah, yeah. That's, that's, it's quite slow really it, it's last last drive of 157 feet um put it over the uh the record how far was, was that? Re- 147 feet that's not far is it um 48 yeah. meters yeah, it's not particularly far. But the uh, was the previous record held by one of the rover, the moon buggies? Uh, it was a moon buggy, but not an American moon buggy. It was held. Oh. It was a Russian. Uh, Lu- Lunokhod two. Oh, uh, I didn't even know that the Russians had been to the moon. To the moon? No, neither did I till I read this. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it went to the moon in 1973, and it drove about 24.2 miles. Now, I can imagine that, that I, I, I thought it would be a, a lunar buggy that would be that because obviously a manned vehicle they probably did a lot more a lot quicker rather than um, stopping every few feet to test this rock and, and measure that rock but, uh, but didn't they also go for a lot shorter period of time because they only had the batteries that they had on them oh yes absolutely. So, so they, they couldn't they, go quite as far yeah, and I don't think anybody stayed on the moon for 10 years. <laughs> well, yeah. So which, because also in the news recently, there was the story about how the wheels are disintegrating. I think they were talking about the later one, not not the two that went. So I'm into all this and I keep forgetting all the names. Yeah, yeah. What's the name of the... Spirit and Opportunity, they're the two that went together, and you've got the latest one that's on there now, haven't you? Which um, is? Yeah. Come on, Google. Um, <laughs> are you typing as well? <laughs> I, I don't do anything with my machine because it, it's working, so I'm not going to touch it. I can't believe I don't know this. I can't believe this. You uh, will do once you've you will do once you read it. Yeah, and you type, type Mars Rover, and all you get is Baz broken the uh, distance record. Oh. Curiosity. Curiosity. That's the one so that's... I think that Curiosity is suffering from damage to the wheels. Oh, right. Did you see that one? No. Um, it's it's quite uh, quite substantial. That it, well, obviously, it hasn't got any rubber tyres. Duh. <laughs> um, but it's got... It, the wheels are, are, are built with spring in them. And it has sort of a surface that's that stops the, the dirt and everything from getting all into the wheel. But it's been hitting um, surface that's harder than they were expecting. So it's actually breaking the wh- breaking the wheels up. The it, it appears that they that there is a front and a back. You know, although it can drive in any direction, they they tend to drive it in one way more than the other. So there is a front and a back. Right. And the front wheels are the ones that take the pounding. <laughs> yeah. Now, g- given the speed that you just said that they're doing, um, if <laughs> if it's not done 25 miles yet and the wheels are falling apart, that's a bit worrying, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it sounds like my car. <laughs> You're listening to Dumbed Down Life. So uh, talking about uh, rovers and autonomous vehicles... Um, the UK government have just passed a bill that's going to allow uh, auto- driverless cars on the UK roads for testing. Have they passed the bill or they, they said that they're open to thinking about passing a bill? No, they've uh, announced that um, the, the UK government has announced that driverless cars will be allowed on public roads from January next year. Oh, so, goodness. so it seems it's actually gone through being done and they're now sort of um, taking bids from cities to um, allow them to use that, that city as a, a testing ground. It's not for commercial, it's for testing Yeah. to, to sort of prove the technology so it does become a, a, a public thing. That's very interesting. I, I, I thought they were just sort of giving a bit of a... Um, 
yeah, we're thinking about it. But uh, no, I didn't realise it was actually passed from January next year. That should be interesting. Yeah, um, and there, there's a a company, um, the University of Oxford. Uh, they've got sort of a company inside the University of Oxford that are de- developing their own car. So it won't be like Google Car. Right. They're sort of trying to do a UK-based version of it as well. Well, because, of course, you know, the Google Car wouldn't work over here. Because <laughs> it'll only drive on the right-hand side. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it, you stole my punch. <laughs> but apparently that within, thing... Within, that... Five minutes of, within five minutes of being released, it had a head-on collision. <laughs> <laughs> uh, apparently that thing's done about 300,000 kilometres on public roads in America. Yeah, when you say that thing, that it's or those not, things exactly. Yeah, yeah. It's not one on its own. Um, yeah, there's there's quite a few of them out there. Um, but I believe that they've been out in. Is it just in California or is I, it all I over? I think so. I think it's just California. Yeah. Um, and I, I I I don't know how the laws go out there. Whether they have to pass sort of state by state laws to let those things out there. I would assume um, so. Yeah. Possibly. And Nissan the, have been doing it in Japan as well. All right. So it looks like we're we're kind of up there, but a little bit behind others. Well, what I want to see is them put a car against an F1 driver or put a car against the Stig. <laughs> On yeah? Top Gear Test Track. <laughs> top Gear Test Track, a car that completely drives itself against the Stig. Well, didn't they do that in, on Top they, Gear? I'm, I think they've done that. Yeah, but if they if they they've not done it recently, surely because if, if if they've done it, then it would have been a uh, a joke piece. I think it was. Yeah, with the with the battery running out and all that sort of thing, <laughs> telling but, people how boring it's going to be once cars drive themselves. And I mean, I, I don't know whether I like the idea or not. I, I kind of like the idea, but I don't know whether I'd be comfortable in the car if that makes sense i think i think the whole idea of something being able to drive itself um and get you where you want to go so in this, in essence it's like sitting on the bus yeah um, i love that idea um but i'm not sure i'm comfortable with the idea of it being something that isn't human the the, the problem I, I, that I have the problem that i have with these is that initially, at least, you need a driving license to be in control of one. Yes. Which means it still has some method of control for you to use. Which I would want. Well, not if the responsibility for whatever the car does comes down to you because you've got a driving license. If you're riding on the DLR through London, which computer controlled, no driver, and it comes off the rails you're not responsible for the fact, you know, you didn't have to learn to drive that train just in case the autom- automatic system doesn't work. So the it, car breaks down, the car does something stupid, runs over an old person or a cat or something, then it's Google that should get sued, not you. Absolutely. Ooh, I'm not so sure. I don't know. Well, the, the, the thing is that the car is doing 60 mile an hour um, and it's fully controlled um, and a a cat runs out in front of it and suddenly it goes returning to manual mode because I don't want to be responsible for running that car driver. <laughs> it's a bit too late like, then. Oh, hang on. Yeah. I'm just in the middle of having me coffee and me sandwich and, and talking, <laughs> to, talking to the person next. If you're going to have to sit there and concentrate just in case it wants to give automatic control back to you, then you might as well be driving. But wouldn't you want to be? I, I don't know whether I'd trust it. <laughs> It's definitely going to take a long time to get the trust. The, the, up. There's a very big mindset shift here, isn't there? Sitting in, I mean, it's different when you're on like a tram or like you say, the DLR. That thing's on rails. It, barring any sort of speed issue, it can't go wrong, can it? Um, it, it kind of goes forwards, it goes backwards, but it, its direction is controlled by the very fact that it's on a rail. When yeah. you're on a public road, um, I mean, you. You you must have done it as many times as I have. You you flick your eyes off the road to look at your sat nav or um, change your stereo or something, and you've drifted to the right a little bit or to the left a little bit. You're no longer right in the middle of the lane, are you? Um, However, the the, the 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 electronics in that car are measuring the distance from that curb and your location and the temperature of the spark plugs and the pressure of the tyre thousands of times a second which you can't do how's it going to do it in snow 
um, it measures the traction control. Yeah, but if, how, if, if you've got snow on the road and you can't see the lines of the road, how are you going to drive Then it's it? going to deem that the, uh, that the um, trip is too dangerous, which we won't. We will drive on that snow feeling confident and not know that it's dangerous. But, but you, I mean, you could still drive on that road. It's not too dangerous. You just have to if, be if, if the road, if you can drive on the road, then you, can, you personally can clearly see clear enough. And so can the, the sat nav. So can the, 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 the car. I'm not the so car, sure. The car might well even have sonar and infrared and capabilities of seeing the road better than we can through the snow. Mm, I'm not so sure. I don't know. I, I, I like the idea and I'd love to see it in action, but I just don't know whether I'd be comfortable sitting in the car. I'm, I'm, have, a, have you I'm a bad had... passenger at the best of times. I don't. <laughs> yeah. I, I am. I, I'm, I'm one of those people that I don't know if you noticed when you drove me up to Yorkshire uh, at the weekend, but I'm you one of these people. That I, I hit the brakes. I break. No, I didn't notice that. Didn't notice that. I do. I. I. I yeah. So. When I'm doing that, if a, another person is driving, Christ knows what I'd be like when a computer's doing it. Well, we've got, well, I say we, I'm not, I think that in our lifetimes, we will see some of these semi-automatic vehicles. Um, we've already seen the ones where um, the, the, the braking takes over from you. So if you're going back to what you were saying earlier if you're concentrating on something that you shouldn't do and you drift to to the edge of the road then there are already systems that will break the and, and slow you down to a stop yeah uh, or if you're about also... to, if you're about to hit the vehicle in front it will slow you down there's nothing that will do the opposite it'll, it'll slow you down but it won't speed you back uh, up, speed you up. Well, i mean there is i mean i i've I'm, I'm a big user of cruise control yeah um, I love that thing, especially when I'm driving at the motorway. Um, but then, and there's also some of the sort of more expensive cars. They have kind of a, a, a radar on them, don't they? Where yes. you can set your speed at 70 miles an hour. You're cruising at the motorway and it will keep you at that speed. If, however, you catch up with the car in front, it will slow you down to match the speed of the car in front. Yeah. Yeah. And then when he pulls out out the way or you decide to go to overtake it, then pushes you back up to the limit you've set. And I'm kind of comfortable with that. Well, what we've I think got it's there, a steering though, thing. Well, what we've got there that is the, um, the tolerances. So um, the, the car manufacturers have set a particular tolerance, expecting the car in front to um, brake suddenly. So what, whatever um, the national stopping distances are then i'm pretty certain that that's what the automatic braking systems are calibrated to if not greater if not a, a greater distance yeah um so the, the the first step will be a mixture of the cars which have got fully automatic and standard cars that aren't haven't got any kind of automation in them and those cars that have got driver capabilities that have also got communications options in them. So you're driving your slightly better than fully manual car that talks to the other vehicles around it to let it know, to let the other vehicles know what's going on. Um, but once all of the cars get to the point where they're all automatic, they're all talking to each other, then you start shrinking the distances between them because your car knows where the next car in front of it is going. Yeah, knows I, suppose the it will its set, brakes, I suppose And it becomes more like a sort of a, 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 you won't be getting cars weaving in and out of each other. I suppose your car will tell all the cars around it in two seconds time, I'm going to swap lanes and all the cars around it make allowances for that fact. That sort of thing. Yeah. But we've got a stage before that where there's still drivers on the road who have got manual cars. Because you're going to have the mixture of all, aren't you? Yeah. That's going to be the, the, the difficult bit to go around, unless they go some sort of direction as to have either lanes I can or see that. entire motorways yeah. that are automatic cars only. I, I now, can the see idea that. of, like, like we did at the weekend, if you're going up to Yorkshire and you're going to be spending a lot of time on the M6 or the M40 or the, or the M1 or whatever, then you can pull out to the, the fifth lane um, and stick your car on fully automatic and it's it stays a, there so like you've got the m4 bus lane you could have an m1 
automatic car lane. I think the M4 bus lane's gone. Is it? I think so. Yeah. But, <laughs> really? But yeah, you, you, you'd have but an that M1. Kind of, a dedicated lane. I, I guess that's where they're going to go. And you probably wouldn't be able to use it in built-up areas and stuff to, initially. Initially, yeah. Um, it's it's going to be other, a gradual introduction, I suppose, isn't it? Yeah. And, and the other thing that I'd be interested to find out, and I doubt whether, again, this I very much doubt will be within our lifetime, is whether you end up owning an automatic car or the fact that if you need to go somewhere, you simply press the um, the call button on your app on your phone and the nearest available charged automatic car turns up on your doorstep. Now, that would that uh, would be good. And and you don't have a, a concept of owning a car. You don't have a concept of running that car. Um, you you simply pay for the use of that car. You just call Johnny Cab. Pretty much, yeah. Uh, and if the first automatic car that I go in doesn't have a Johnny Cap as the driver, <laughs> I'm going to be most upset. Okay, time for a song then. Um, this is Tamara Laurel and Sweet. So you you had you started with the um, Mars rover driving. You segued from that into automatic driving vehicles. Yes. Um, so we've had 
vehicles driving on planets a long way away. <laughs> I wonder where this is going. <laughs> Uh, a long time. No, let's see. I can't fit the timing thing into it. Somebody, for a joke or a bet or some sort of for for, for some non-serious reason, um, had their middle name changed to Skywalker. <laughs> yes. And when trying to get her passport renewed, she signed her um, her passport. L, I think it's Louise, was it? Possibly. Laura. 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 So she signed her passport, L Skywalker, <laughs> and the passport office said no. Computer says no. Computer says no. <laughs> the, the, the reason why is what I find strange. They don't, they, they, they said that it was denied because they didn't want, because the name infringed copyright laws. Yep. Luke Skywalker and the Skywalker name is trademarked. So you you can't use a trademarked name. So but how does Mr. Smith get on with the fact that he's named after a crisp manufacturer? <laughs> and I'm fairly or Mr. sure Clark get on with the fact that he's named after a shoe, shoe manufacturer. Yeah, and I'm fairly sure maybe that's because they're named after real people. Uh, and the company name is the name of a real person, whereas Skywalker is a fictitious. Um, there, there was never anybody character. called Skywalker, Skywalker before the Star Wars films. I uh, I wouldn't know. I wouldn't. I wouldn't have not. thought. Yeah. Um, the other thing that they're that being typically British, they've said they don't want to make a mockery of the passport system, you know, because. <laughs> Everybody, you know, they, they, they just everybody then would be changing their name to something silly so that it looks funny on their on their passport. It's like, really? Don't think so. So no. Um, plus, <laughs> um, I mean, the 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 woman in question said she's had no problems with her driving license. The driving, driving license, license. Has, has got it on. Well, yep. that's as, as official Bank a, a details. Piece. Yeah, and they're as official pieces of identification as much as the passport is. Yep. Yep. Um, but yeah, perhaps it was the um, perhaps it was the buns on the side of her head in the <laughs> photograph that really upset them. Well, with holidays and so forth coming up over the next few weeks, it being the summer break and all, I'm not sure when the next recording is actually going to be because I think you've got some things planned and I have certainly got some things planned. Yes. Um, one of those things would actually, because the, the one we're going to together, not not wig wig, you know what I mean? Yes. Um, that would be a good topic of conversation, although it yes. might not might not make a very good recording. <laughs> if we, if we were, <laughs> yeah, yeah. See, that's it. And tease them, king, hook them in, you know, reel them in on the ideas. Thank you very much for listening. Um, we will be putting show notes together, and probably you'd have seen the show notes because they normally go out at the same time as the recording but just in case you're subscribed via the old rss feeds show notes will be back on the website um and we will record again soon i hope ta-ra ta-ra you can call the dumb down life crew on 07 092 274 759. You can follow us on Twitter. Our account name is Dumb Down Life. The email address is ddl.podshow at gmail.com. The website address is www.dumbdownlife.com. Thank you.